Welcome back to Who Chose. Today on Who Chose, we visit Rob Bob at his home and he takes us on a walkthrough of his aquaponic system. I'm also going to take you on a journey through the operation of a bell siphon and Rob and I are both releasing the 3D printable bell siphon together on my Patreon as well as in his aquaponics guide if you purchase or already have Rob's guide. So let's get to the function of a bell siphon. So nestled up in the corner of my hydroponic greenhouse is this. This is a hydroponic flood and drain bed. I had actually intended on it being an aquaponics bed until I found out the price of fingerlings in my area. At which point I pivoted to hydroponics and it has been running on hydroponic nutrient ever since. Now for me, one of the trickiest things to set up about this bed was the bell siphon. And I know Rob later in the video is gonna say he has an easy time of it, but me, myself, I actually found it quite difficult to get all of the dimensions of the pipes right, pretty much because I winged it and I should have read up on available material like Rob's guide. I eventually got there and has been running on a bell and shroud PVC enclosure for years until recently when I swapped it out for my 3D printable version. This method of flooding and draining a grow bed is completely hands off. I love it because it means that you can run a pump continuously, which then allows the siphon to do all of the flooding and draining work. This means that the pump isn't turning on and off, which can be one of the main sources of wear to your pump. So let's have a look at how the bell siphon operates. Here I have a cutaway of the 3D printable bell siphon that I've designed. And this is going to allow me to demonstrate how the siphon action occurs. A bell siphon is a device that is used in hydroponic and aquaponic systems to regulate the water and nutrient flow in a grow bed amongst grow media to create a cyclical flooding and draining of the media with a siphon that allows a pump to run continuously. There are a few benefits to this flooding and draining of the media, but the main benefit is oxygen, providing an oxygen rich environment to both the roots of the plants and especially in aquaponics, where we have beneficial bacteria living on the media within the grow bed, converting the fish waste into nutrients that the plants can use. The basic components of a bell siphon include the standpipe, the bell, and a media shroud. The standpipe is a vertical tube that runs through the center of our siphon and this sets the water level at which the siphon initiates. The bell covers the standpipe and is usually removable, but not in the case of our 3D printable one. Otherwise, it is typically sealed at the top and open at the bottom and this cavity surrounding the standpipe creates the siphon. The media shroud is just a physical barrier that stops the media from entering as the water enters the system. And there is one extra component, which is this snorkel. And this snorkel allows the siphon to break more consistently and reduces siphon stalling, which would leave the grow bed empty. The operation of a bell siphon happens in a cyclical process with four distinct phases. The first phase is the filling phase where the water enters the bell siphon through the base and as the water rises it covers the internal standpipe which leads to our second phase which is siphon initiation. Once the water reaches the level of the standpipe it falls down into the drain and once a high enough flow rate is achieved, a siphon is initiated. The siphon creates a vacuum inside the bell shaped chamber and water starts flowing rapidly down through the standpipe, at which point we have the draining phase. As the water is siphoned out, the bed drains until it reaches the level of the snorkel and this is the fourth phase in the process where the air enters the snorkel, the vacuum at the top of our bell is broken, 
resetting the entire system, allowing our bed to refill from our pump. Special guest on the video today, Rob Bob. Great to see you, mate. Nice to see you too, Hitchin. We just run through how bell siphons work, and now I want to show you how they fit within an aquaponics system. Maybe you can give us like a quick run through from the sump through all of the different stages in the process. Not a problem. Um, and then ending with the bell siphon. Not a problem. Back to the sump. In the sump is basically a, a body of water with a pump in it, and there is an eel tail catfish in there somewhere. Oh, really? Yep. Uh, it's just down hiding over there. Oh, yeah, I see him. Yeah. So, pump yep. um, up the hose, the hose splits the flow, and in our system here, it splits two ways. The back one goes out to grow beds, this mm. one here goes to fish tank. We have a, a hose that goes down out the side of the sump tank, runs around the back, yep. and enters into the fish tank. Over the back there, I have a water inlet with a venturi in it to help supply oxygen to the fish. The fish do their business in there, as you can see, we've spooked them. Yeah, any solids and water is then picked up at the bottom of the solids lifting outlet, mm -hmm. collects the poop yep. and the ammonia. It's taken out through the side wall of the tank there into a drain line yep. that feeds into the radial flow settler or an upflow settler. Basically, we're um, bringing the water into a stand pipe gets redirected down, solids fall out of it. There's you got heaps of videos, of videos on your YouTube if you want to check out Explain. all of these and how to make them as well. Explaining as well as how to make. Absolutely. Um, from there, we move in to what I call my insurance policy. This is a moving bed bioreactor, basically on these little wagon wheels from the, they're used in the um, sewage industry and also aquaculture. Bacteria live on these and they process the toxic ammonia into plant available and fish friendly and nitrates. Beautiful. So that's an insurance policy. This actually takes the place of the clay. So in an aquaculture system without the media and bacteria there, this is where the bacteria live to do all the processing. This is just a safety net for me. Generally speaking though, it's the uh, media in the grow bed that takes that role, but yeah, I just prefer to have a little bit of um, yep. safety up my sleeve for the fish. Absolutely. Then okay, from cool. there, the water goes back into the sump tank, and then the other line goes out to the individual grow beds. I was unaware though, I was not aware that the that doesn't actually feed the beds. It can do. It can? It okay. can do. Right, that's, okay. That's on a single loop system. Yep. So the water would come up through the solid settler, they would be set higher, and then it would feed via gravity directly into the beds all the way so around. So multiple ways of doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, okay. I like this way because I can regulate the flow in and out of the grow beds themselves yeah. and also the fish tank. So I have valves set at every grow bed. With a gravity flow, you've got to use the whole flow that comes out of the fish tank, mm. and that can cause a few issues down the line. Uh, easily fixed, but just for ease of use, I like to oversize the pump and split the flow this way. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And then that returns up into the bed. Into the grow beds, we have an inlet in the back corner of this bed yep. that you can't quite see it. Yeah, right? that's because your plants are so healthy. <laughs> yeah, this is the Warrigal Green or New Zealand spinach has sort of taken over. Another inlet into this longer bed beside us here. Yep. Uh, full of volunteers again, and then also a dual root zone bed over the back. And from the bed, the bed fills up, obviously. Yep. And we've got, this is a homemade bell siphon. This is a homemade bell siphon. Uh, um, which is pretty much the only way to make them, isn't it? It and, is, uh, at the moment. At the moment. Yep, that's yeah. pretty much all it. Uh, or you can buy homemade ones from uh, different hydroponic and aquaponic outlets. Yeah, as okay. Well. Yep. So this this is an extremely homemade one. We've just I got love a, this though. This is great because you can see the whole process. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's um, just a, a drink bottle, a soda bottle, a um, yep. soft drink bottle, uh, just a cap on it. <clears throat> I've got a basic little grommet that goes through. Most hydroponicists will know exactly what that is. 30 yep. mil, half inch. Yep. Uh, some barb fittings, bit of hose, and then a snorkel down the side. And I'd like to say at this point, if you don't have a 3D printer uh, and want to make your own bell siphon out of uh, PVC pipe and stuff, yep. you've got guides on that as well. Yeah, there's a fair few different issues that people struggle with bell siphons. I find them very easy to make and run, mm. um, but they're all very simple, easy fixes. Seriously, check out my uh, Bell Siphon 101 guide. It's got all the simple fix that you'll see threads and threads on different social media about. Simple fixes that are, yeah, yeah. look after it in five seconds. Yeah. The Bell Siphon kicks in after it reaches a certain level at the top of this. Yep, the standpipe. Um, the standpipe pretty much will dictate the height in the bed. Exactly the same as yours, except you can't see it in your print because it's yep. all internal. Very and clever design. Thank you. There may be a future version, which I'll actually send to you, yep. um, where you can take it apart because I want it to be 
cleanable. Yep. But as anyway. you said, it's all beater at the moment. Yeah, yeah, we'll, that's we'll right. Through this. We'll we're working through it. It's so from there, the, as soon as the siphon initiates, it just falls back down into the sump. Yep. Um, hopefully devoid of any um, nutrients, nice and clean. If you've yep. got your fish and plant ratios all sorted, yeah, yeah. back through to the fish just to be loaded up with our nutrients yet again. Yeah, beautiful. And look how happy these fish are. Wait, what are these? Uh, uh, jade perch. Jade perch. Yeah. So just, just do a, a quick toss in. Yep, and move away from the tank because they yep. get a little bit shy. Yeah, okay. Because we've been standing over the top. So might be better if you just toss like the whole cup in. All oh, right. Here they go. Oh, how cool. Yeah, they get, they get a little bit camera shy after they were moved. It's like they expect someone with a net to be over the top of the tank. Oh, true. <laughs> how many did you have in there? Um, we pulled out, I think there was about 14, 16. Okay. But originally we had about 40, I think. Yeah, right. It smells really clean. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like... And the veggies don't taste like fish either. No, yeah. <laughs> I'm here with Rob Bob and we're at his place having a look at his aquaponics setup and we wanted to release this. This is a 3D printable bell siphon that is going to be both available on my Patreon as well as my Backyard Aquaponics for Beginners Guide. Your print file actually has a specific uh, shroud lid that has your logo on it. Thank you very much. No worries at all. And on my files, we'll have my logo on mine. Head over to Rob's and you get the a Backyard Aquaponics Guide as well. Yes, and the guide is added to continuously, a little bit more once we move and settle into the farm. Yep. Uh, but it's basically a lifetime subscription, online interactive guide. And you can also ask me questions through there, jump the queue from YouTube or wherever you see me around social media. So there are going to be multiple different size uh, bell siphons available, different heights as well as different height shrouds. Uh, there are instructions and flow rates on the file itself, which give you the diameter of the pipe that you should be using to attach to the bottom when you've screwed it in. And at, right now you'll be seeing B-roll of the flood and drain bed in my greenhouse working, uh, flooding and draining uh, with the bell siphon that we have here. There is a snorkel on it, which Rob actually helped me design when I was like, what do I need to do to make this bell siphon? I gave you a call and yeah. you, you gave me heaps of advice. So that's why I kind of wanted to do this collaboration because, you know, help out the people that help you out. I think this is gonna be really useful to a lot of people in the aquaponics community. And that is what you've been doing all this time yes. with your guide. So yes. how good? It's excellent. Yeah, and yeah. I actually can't wait. Full disc disclosure, I don't have any set up at the moment. We're about to pull this system down. Yep. The new system will feature some of these in it. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. And we can, you can help me troubleshoot it. I will. I will. I will. <laughs> this file is, it is like a beta, a, a prototype. So if you do have some problems, please let us know through the Patreon comments uh, on my Patreon or through Rob's guide. guide. And yeah. I'll pass them on and to uh, pass... Hucho straight away. Exactly. And I'll tinker with it and we'll try and get this thing working as best as possible for as many situations as possible as well. So, and those files will be updated on my guide as well because I can alter and update things all the time. So. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, you'll just be able to download that through straight away. Yeah, yep, through the guide. I'd like to thank you for having me in your house. Not a problem. And it's showing me around your beautiful garden. Yep. Um, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what you do with this new place. I'm going to get you up there and get you to critique my systems and maybe Matt, give me a couple of pointers. I'm going to give you a hand doing it. Yeah, that'd yeah. Be awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just going to be nice for you to have you. There's that much space too. Yeah. 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 And we've got a couple of grow tunnels that I'm actually thinking about, yeah. Mm, perfect. Mm. Okay, so there are multiple parts to this file. This entire print prints in one piece. It prints upside down on your grow bed without any support at all. I've designed it this way internally. Not sure how easy this is to see, but internally, the standpipe is completely supported by the top bell. So there is no need for any supports which makes it a really nice compact print. Now I personally use a 0.8 millimeter nozzle, but you can use a 0.4 because it is divided by 0.8. And to separate the file, you just need to use a Prusa slicer and separate the file into parts. There is an option there. Or you can use Cura Slicer where there is an extension called Mesh Tools. So once you've installed that extension, it allows you to separate the model into parts and print individual parts. And to make the print 
airtight, which is actually the most important part because water probably won't travel through your print lines, but it is more likely that air will. If you haven't got your print settings perfect, like me, you can airtight seal your print with a gloss clear coat. Now, this is going to stop the siphon breaking prematurely. I seal it by coating the outside of the bell siphon, as well as spraying the clear coat down the center of the standpipe, which gives you both an external airtight seal and an internal airtight seal. And that will fix any problems you have with the siphons prematurely breaking because of air ingress. Most of the rest of the instructions are on the file itself. And if you have any other questions, reach out to me in my Patreon or Rob in his aquaponics guide. So the first five people to sign up with the code Hucho will get $5 off Rob's guide. And go and check out Rob's second channel. Bits out the back. Bits out the back. Stand. That's the one. Yep. Yeah, yeah. He's got a bunch of content over there. And especially if you're setting up your own homestead, there's a lot of insight there too. Yeah, there's a couple of pointers on what to do and what not to do along the way when looking to purchase a property. Thank you, mate. Thanks again. No worries. Happy hydroponicking. Happy aquaponicking. See you next time, Cheers, folks. Thanks. All right, that's sick. Um, yeah, <laughs> how good. <laughs> if you oversize the holes, yep. It takes the human error out of it. Ah, uh, yeah, mate. With these buckets. Yeah, yeah. Straight on there. No mozzies can get underneath. Yep. I can shift them around and move them.